Hey there, my name is Ali and welcome to the Photoshop course. Uh, if you haven't watched the episodes before that, make sure you watch them so you catch up with us. Like we said, the last thing was how to move your layers and how like the understanding the difference between layers and how to press Ctrl T, make it smaller or bigger. We discussed everything. Now it was how to edit the photos themselves. So first I'm gonna rename this one. Let's renaming it just press double click make sure you're standing on the text to rename it and i'll call this right and this one i'm gonna double click and call it left okay now let's start with the left one if you notice this one is a smart object because of the like the sign here and this one is not a smart object okay the first one i'm gonna go to image now like why do we go to image if you want to like edit your image where you're gonna go is the image okay that's just like so you can like remember it. You can do the auto tone, auto contrast. It will try to automatically do it. But if you don't want that, you want to like edit it by yourself. Just go to image and adjustments. In this one, we will have everything. <clears throat> I'm going to go like few of them and you can try the rest by your own. The first one is brightness and contrast. Obviously, brightness will make everything brighter. Or everything darker. And the contrast will make the whites whiter and the darks darker if you increase it. If you decrease it, it will make the darks whiter and the whites darker. So this is the first thing. I'm going to press OK, for example. I want it like that. Now when I pressed OK, what happened is, is it added something called a smart filter because it was raster. It was a smart object. This will only work if in like late versions of Photoshop, if you're using an older version, this will not work. When you go to the image adjustments, you won't find anything available here if it's a smart object. To change it, just press right click and rasterize layer. In this one, I made the right click. It was a smart object. I made right click rasterize layer. Now I'm going to go to image adjustments, brightness and contrast. I'm going to make this one darker now or maybe brighter, and I will increase the contrast. Now if I press OK, you see I didn't get the smart filter something, but the effect is added. The difference is, for that one, I can double click the brightness and contrast, and I can change it back again. But for this one, the change is lost. All you can do is press Ctrl Z for an undo, but you can't like go back to it and change again. You can just undo it. Okay, that's the difference between the rasterized and the non-rasterized. Okay, let's go again through some editing. Okay, image adjustments. The levels and the curves are like almost the same. I'm not going to go through the levels. It's exactly the same as curves, only slight difference. The curves, it's a little bit complicated for this tutorial, but it's all about like it's showing you your image. You can darken specific points. Like the brightness and contrast, you would darken the whole image. But in levels, you can, in the levels or curves, you can choose points to darken or brighten just like specific points in your photo. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna do like a detailed tutorial about curves, but it's very advanced, so I don't recommend it like for beginners. Let's go to the vibrance. Exposure is just like brightness and contrast. Let's go to the vibrance. Vibrance is adding color. Same as saturation. Saturation is adding color to the image. Let's bring it back to zero. Vibrance is also adding color to the image, but the vibrance is a little bit smarter filter. So let's say we want to make the image very vibrant, something like filled with color, something like that. Okay. Now let's go to the right one. Go to image, adjustments, vibrance. Now I want to make this one very strong colors. I'll add like saturation and vibrance to the max. Now it's like super color. And I'm going to press OK. OK, now let's go to the first one. You see now we have the vibrance and the brightness and contrast. I can double click the vibrance and change it again because this is a smart object. OK, I'm going to go to image adjustments. Let's jump to the one after it, hue and saturation. OK, now the hue and saturation menu is mainly about like three things. Hue, saturation and lightness. The hue is the color itself, so if it's if we change it to the left, it will move all the colors to the left. Now we have, this is something like yellow. So if we move yellow to the left, it will go towards the red. So if we move this a little bit to the left, it's going towards the red. 
Then now it's going towards the magenta. Then it will start going towards the blue. Okay, this is called the hue. The saturation is the same as saturation we found in the vibrance, where you can like reduce the colors or make them like a lot stronger. Or just like re reduce them. If you reduce them to zero, it's gonna be black and white because there is no color. I'm gonna bring it back to zero. And the lightness is basically like making everything darker or making everything brighter. The colors. Okay, this has a lot of like more stuff, but it's advanced. We're gonna stick for this for now. You can like increase the color, play around with the color itself, and make it dark or bright. Okay, that's for the hue and saturation. Okay, let's go to the one after it. It's called adjustments, color balance. This one is basically like adding every color by itself to your photo. So if we add cyan, it will add cyan to the whole photo. If we add magenta, it will add magenta to the whole photo. We can make it like more yellowish. We can make it more bluish. Depending on what you want to achieve, we can add red and yellow. Red and yellow will give you more of an orange look. Okay, we're gonna go like there is also a lot of options in this, but we're gonna go like just through the basics here. We're not gonna go through detailed stuff. Okay, adjustments, image adjustments. Okay, the one after is called black and white. We open that, it transforms your photo completely to black and white. It's another way, but here it has every color intensity by itself. You can play around with every color to make some like something like darker and brighter, some stuff like that. I'll bring that, I'll press cancel. Okay, I don't like making black and white using this way. Why do it this way? You can always go to hue and saturation and just bring the saturation to zero and it's gonna be black and white. Okay, image adjustments. Let's go, the rest is like photo filter. You can add a filter on top of your photo. Let's say we need an underwater filter. It will take an underwater color and you can increase it, like make it stronger or make it weaker. It's like an underwater filter. There are many filters, like you can make it warm, you can make it cold, you can make it orange red, and you can play with the intensity. Okay. Okay, that's it for editing photos, guys. This is like editing the whole layer by itself. We can, like we didn't still discuss how to edit specific parts, like we didn't do something like that. Like this, we're only editing like a specific part. Wait, it must be uh, like on this one. If we make a selection and we edit a part, we're gonna edit a specific part only. We will gonna do this in the next tutorial, as well as we're gonna discuss the selection tools, how to select something and edit it specifically. However, remember all the tools we said about? You were like, we stood on a layer and we made that edit, like image adjustments, hue saturation, we made it black and white. Only one layer, we made it black and white. What if we want to make like an edit for the whole images? Like I want to make them both black and white in one go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stand on the top layer. And you see here you have like the half circle white, half circle black. This one, if you uh, click on it, it's exactly the same as image adjustments. But if I open it, I'll see the same thing, the brightness contrast, the curves, the vibrance, the hue saturation. But if I click on one, it will make it on a separate layer. Now, if I increase the saturation, it will increase for both of them of everything what is below of it. If I bring the saturation below, it will do that to everything which is below of it. So if I put it down here, it will not affect this one because it's sorry, only affecting this one because it's on top of it. If I put it on top of everything, now we made our edit on everything. Okay, let's say we have to open it. Let's go to brightness contrast. Make sure it's on top of everything. Let's make everything darker and more contrasty. This is another way. It's almost, it's like the same, but the difference is this is on a separate layer. And if you bring it on top, it will target all what is below. The other one was only targeting a separate layer, only targeting the layer you're standing on. Okay, that's it for part three. See you in part four.